You're still watching our special coverage uh, for the big story. Ako po si Robbie Alampay. At ako naman si Gretchen Ho. And despite allegations of election fraud from reports of uh, defective vote counting machines, uh, Comelec Commissioner George Garcia is commending the speedy transmission of election results, calling it the fastest yet. But exactly how are uh, these data processed? That big question and more with University of the Philippines Diliman Associate Professor and Statistician Dr. Peter Kaiton. Dr. Kaiton, Professor, welcome to The Big Story. Uh, hi, Roby and Gretchen. Thank you for having me. Hi, Pro Professor Kaiton, you're, you're a, uh, the stat guy on Twitter, mm -hmm. as, as most people uh, know. <laughs> Al alam niya naman, as with every crisis, di ba, everybody's forced to try to catch up with very, very technical things. Nung COVID, we were all forced to, be, to yeah. try to be epidemiologists. No, that's true. Um, <laughs> with, uh, with the economy, we learned different things. With every disaster, we have a new yeah. term. Let's start. With, with the basics, uh, so statistics, what, expect, what exactly, when we're looking at all of these things that are coming through us sa social media natin, sa mga chat groups natin, what's the first thing you would remind people about statistics and about graphs and about these numbers and straight lines that we're looking at? So what we are going to, what we have in statistics is we always look not just at the numbers and the data, we also look at the context and how the data was processed or generated. So for example, if you're looking at the election accounts here, we know that these are coming from the precincts mm. and these precincts are coming from the voters. So if we are, for example, maybe looking, at, looking out for possible uh, discrepancies or flaws, or uh, in some cases anomalies, it is best to really look at not on the aggregate because, or the on the total votes because the total votes would drown out any possible changes, variations, flaws that comes from the individual precincts. Mm. So oftentimes we either look at the precincts or look at how the voters uh, have been interacted with before they get into the precinct because a lot of possible uh, uh, anomalies could be caused with uh, the voter uh, being affected by, for example, vote buying or at the precinct, some level of tampering before they get into what we see as the total or the aggregate counts. Awesome. So it is very difficult to really look at. Uh, so you have to really understand the context of how the data is being generated. Mm. Okay, but I, I do lang yung, one thing I want to just really grasp. We're saying, because... I think one of the things that's so magical and powerful for us when we talk about statistics and, 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 you know, and the illustrations and the graphing of it is precisely that we know these are real numbers, right? and somebody took the pains to chart it. Right? It's, it's very tangible, it's real. If you go back to the source, you know kung saan galing yung numbers, and therefore people immediately assume, eh, bakit may basis to, mukhang, mukhang reasonable. But, so, but I want to start with that, ano, uh, with that premise. Um, can you divine behavior uh, by looking at numbers and by looking at charts? Can we, in fact, uh, uh, divine whether or not that is a natural, normal, acceptable, or abnormal behavior? Now, when we look at the aggregate counts or with the uh, change in the number of votes, between different transmissions. Uh, mahirap kasing madiscern kung yung changes into the voting are something that could be anomalous. Uh, mm. It's because um, it is a confluence of a lot of things happening. But when you aggregate them, uh, the differences, the variations fade away kasi uh, there's the law of large numbers mm. uh, working for us in terms of when we have so many voter counts already generated, um, the proportion of votes will just be going to be the same because ah. we're already dealing with very large numbers. Now, in terms of anomalous, um, there are ways where when you look at the individual level pre uh, precinct data, there might be something that is different from the norm. However, it is still not a definite uh, point of anomaly because that is going to require human investigation. Mm. So with the numbers, you can 
see the patterns and the trends, pero to say that something is anomalous, mm. it really requires more evidence. Okay. Okay, para lang po maintindihan natin ang mga viewers din natin, no? what we're talking about actually. What, you know, uh, I've seen a lot of uh, bar graphs and charts float on social media last night. People questioning, you know, what, parang baka may daya dito. Masyado uh, malinis, sabi. Yeah, oh, oh, diba? Malinis, oh. Let's, you know, just to try to lay it down. Ano nga ba? What is the accusation and what are people trying to say hmm. by posting those charts online? Hmm. Siguro, one thing that I see right now is, for example, the assertion of 68 Marcos 32 uh -huh. Robredo. Hmm. That one is something that I've seen and I believe uh, PPCRV has moved to like investigate it. Now, when I see how they compute them, they're computing it based on the total cumulative counts for Marcos and the total cumulative counts for Robredo. Hmm. They ignore the other candidates for. So that's why yung 68 plus 32 equals 100 kasi parang kumpiyan na lang silang dalawa dahil sila na lang yung dalawang pinag-iinteresan ng maraming tao. Now, may problem yun because when we look at Robredo's and Marcos's numbers, they're already in the millions. Large numbers are already working. And there is this idea in statistics called the law of large numbers in which case, once you already have very large uh numerators and denominators to solve for percentages, um, kahit anong pasok na, as data becomes more and more, mm -hmm. those ratios will go st or stay constant. So sometimes, what we try to look, rather than at the total cumulative count, tignan mo kung ano yung nagbago sa kada transmission, yung mm -hmm. change doon sa boto ni Marcos, mm -hmm. yung change mm -hmm. sa boto ni Robredo, and you will see na hindi stable yung 68-32. Hmm. Pwedeng maging 66 to 68 kay Marcos. Hindi hmm. stable yon. Uh, meron naman yung posible kay Robredo maging uh, so 30, uh, 32 to 34, for yeah. example. So, kung gagawa ako ng dayaan para dun sa transmission ng boto, I wouldn't want to rely na maging too movie too, uh, ah, too, ah. Uh, too uh, shaky mm. yung pag-transmit. So, yun lang yung issue doon. So, once we see the variation... Okay. From but the, the variation, right? because, because again, we have no idea of the scales that we're talking about yes, here. Yes, right? yes, so, so, but, but a variation of two in this case, whether for the 60 plus of Bongbong -bong and the 30 plus of... Ano, that... See, that would be, a, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if acceptable is the term, but that's a, a more or less statistically uh, not abnormal, let's say. Okay. So for me, the assertion would be that parang hindi naman ganun ka reliable kung bibigyan ko ng wiggle room. Okay. Now, um, whether the data again reflects yung anomaly or anomalous behavior, uh, even at the change in votes, malaking number pa rin yun eh with, when we talk about uh, Robredo and Marcos's mm. numbers. So really, if we really want to look for evidence of anomaly, we can look at the precinct data or we can look at the experiences of voters during their uh, exercise of their okay. right to vote. Mm in terms of anong nangyayari. Because in, in, yun, uh, mas malakas na ebidensya. In, in other words, you look at the opposite end of where people are looking at right now. Because people are looking at the aggregate and they're looking at the big numbers and trying to divine something on a national level and on the totality level. What you're saying is, no, actually, if I'm understanding correctly, you're, you're saying, no, actually, if you want to look for evidence, you have to go back to, to the machines and you have to do the audit on the level of the vote by vote, which is something that actually PPCRV is supposed to do. That is, uh, that is what we see. And I know that, I think by law, mm. uh, Comelec will also do the random manual audit. In fact, they have already started it earlier today mm. to, choose and, uh, to choose certain precincts of who would be part of this random manual audit. Uh, in the history of the random manual mm. audit, it has uh, always been at least 99%. Uh, and if I remember with the 2016, that is also the standard that we okay. have about it. So, yeah. 
Very okay. good to clear that out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, sige, maraming salamat. That was Dr. Peter Carton, the stat guy on Twitter. Uh,